so uh, in retina what happens is there is a cycle going on there is a visual cycle going on that cycle is called wall's visual cycle wall's visual cycle what is that wall's visual cycle i'm just going to give you an overview here we'll talk about the wall's visual cycle in the next page thing is in the retina you have if you remember the two types of cells what were the two types of cells there were the rods and there were the cones rods they had a very interesting pigment called rhodopsin rhodopsin if we look at it biochemically this is nothing but actually a conjugated protein it's a pigment so it's a protein it's a conjugated protein which means that it is a protein conjugated with a non protein part what is the non protein part reti uh, vitamin a i wouldn't say retinol it's not retinol it's a different form of vitamin a what is that rhodopsin actually uh, is actually this ball opsin cuddled in the arms of this kink bearing structure that is 11 cis retinol so up to now all the vitamin a forms that we were talking about were retinol but now this is 11 cis retinol remember that example that i had given in cis trans configuration isomerism of retinoids 11 cis retinol 11 cis retinol this actually bears this opsin interlocked with opsin to form the rhodopsin pigment right so in a very general tone if i am to say obviously now you can understand why vitamin a is required for your vision 11 cis retinol that means it's it's a vitamin right it's a vitamin it's it's one of the retinoids so if you do not have this parent compound or if you do not have the parent compound from where this 11 cis retinol is coming which is vitamin a you wouldn't have this rhodopsin so obviously you would have problems with the, your vision right so now let's very quickly talk about the visual cycle the cyclic events that are occurring in our vision when light is coming bleaching rhodopsin again in dim light rhodopsin is reformed and the dim light vision is coming back which by the way i am assuming that you know that rods are meant for dim vision and cones for bright colored vision right so let's look at that right now so suppose you have rhodopsin in your rod cells what happens is rhodopsin if it is formed or rather if it is pre formed we have to assume that light conditions are not there that is it's dim light because if there is bright light rhodopsin will get bleached it will get destroyed kind of not destroyed really it will get broken down so let's assume that's the case that this is light coming down what will happen to rhodopsin very interestingly rhodopsin will break down into a series of compounds which will later break down into the retinol and opsin part but before breaking down into its constituents a series of compounds a series of intermediates within a matter of picoseconds they will be formed what are those intermediates they are first of all batho rhodopsin then lumi rhodopsin right then meta rhodopsin 1 then meta rhodopsin 2 these are the intermediates more or less there are other meta rhodopsin 3 is there as well and there is uh, some precursors as well but these are the major 
intermediates that are formed so to un to really remember them what i use is their acronyms that is b l m black lives matter or bethrodopsin lumidopsin metarodopsin 1 2 all right 1 2 this is more or less the important intermediates now now what actually occurs is the option is given out the ball which was being born in the kink or the arm of 11 cis retinal that is given out as opsin. Opsin is a protein part. But very interestingly, you would assume that here 11 cis retinal would be given out. But no, 11 cis retinal is photoisomerized into all trans retinal. Interesting, very interesting. So this should have been 11 cis retinal because rhodopsin is made of opsin and 11 cis retinal. But Photoisomerization of 11 cis retinal occurs and all trans retinal is what we get. Right? Right. This is happening in the rods or the retinal pigment epithelium. Right? Now, now a very interesting thing occurs. Either all trans retinal is immediately reconverted. This is bilateral by the way. Into... 11 cis retinal which would obviously join with opsin to form rhodopsin and this reaction by the way this occurs under the presence of retinal retinal isomerase and this occurs only in the dark so this is how rhodopsin is reformed after getting bleached. So it got bleached, broken down. Bright light is there. Cones are doing their work. But when dark light, dim light sets back in, rhodopsin is reformed. Reformed. How? All trans retinal, which was the photoisomerized form of 11 cis retinal, that is again isomerized by the rod enzyme retinal isomerase in the presence of obviously the dark conditions into 11 cis retinal opsin obviously is al already there joins to form rhodopsin but this is not the com this is the complete waltz visual cycle this is the cycle but there is another long form as well if you remember i had said that being fat soluble retinol or vitamin a it can be stored in liver. So what our body does is, it moves some excess of this form into liver to be stored and to be given out when necessary. So there is a long form of this world's visual cycle as well. Let's write that down. So what happens is, this all trans retinal, very interestingly, it is actually converted into an all trans retinol retinal to retinol so in organic chemistry aldehyde to alcohol that means you are reducing this so you need hydrogen and for that you need reducing equivalence so you need NADH plus H plus and NAD plus is formed right and obviously the name of the enzyme is retinal dehydrogenase or another name alcohol dehydrogenase retin retinol not null did i say retinal no i'm sorry retinol because what did i say alcohol dehydrogenase either you can say alcohol dehydrogenase or you can say retinol dehydrogenase are you getting me retinol dehydrogenase this enzyme, very interestingly, uh, since it's an enzyme, it needs some cofactors. Retinol dehydrogenase needs zinc. So that's why a deficiency of zinc can alter or can inhibit this cycle. Can actually lead to impairment of this cycle. That's why you need zinc for vitamin A function. 
Anyways, so that's retinol dehydrogenase. Converting that into all trans retinol, which by the way, in this form it is being transported. By the way, as I'm writing this, this is actually getting transported to liver. In liver, all trans retinol is actually arriving. And in liver, as I mentioned, is this retinol is stored in the form of an ester, which is retinol ester or retinyl ester, all trans retinyl ester. So in liver, now you have reached liver, all trans retinyl ester. This is in liver. This is stored in liver. And this enzyme which does this is acyl transferase. Alright? Acyl transferase. So, all trans retinyl ester, after being formed, it remains like that. This is how it is going. Very good. Very beautiful. One day, suddenly, rods, they are signaling the liver that, hey, we need rhodopsin. We need these, uh, you know, all trans retinal. We need 11 cis retinal. We have, we have actually, what, depleted our source for some reason. We have depleted them. Please send. So then what will liver do? Liver will tell, okay, all trans retinal ester, for mobilization purpose, it will again be reforming all trans retinol. So again, for mobilization purpose, it is mobilized in this way not in an ester form it is reconverted back to all trans retinol all right now if you remember i had mentioned that from liver you're sending retinol to rods so what do you need you need something in blood via blood this will go bound to very good Retinol binding protein. So this will be bound to retinol binding protein. Now this will all trans retinol. This will actually move on. And what will happen is all trans retinol. This will actually be isomerized into 11 cis retinol. This all trans retinol now it will be actually converted or rather isomerized to 11 cis retinol. All right, so we'll get 11 cis retinol. Now, listen to me carefully. For this, what you would require is retinol because both of these are retinol. Retinol isomerase so in the rods you used up retinal isomerase in the you might say liver or in the blood as well you use retinol isomerase all right and what are you getting you're getting 11 cis retinol a major confusion which at least used to uh, you know uh, i used to suffer from this is I used to do all trans retinol to all trans retinal. No. First, all trans retinol to 11 cis retinol. Because retinol to retinal is not isomerase. It is this retinol dehydrogenase. So now you will convert the retinol to retinal. Not from here to direct retinal. Are you getting me? First, you will convert all trans to 11 cis. For that, you will require the isomerase enzyme. Then, you will convert the 11 cis retinol to this 11 cis retinol. 11 cis retinol. Here, the enzyme will be retinol dehydrogenase again. So, retinol dehydrogenase and the enzyme used oh that's the enzyme and just like here you had a need for reduction potential here you will give out reduction potential because this is oxidation occurring 
right and this was a reversible reaction that's why we are writing the same reaction reversed using the same enzyme but this will be reversed so now we will use up nad plus getting nadh plus h plus essentially completing the cycle so this lower part is happening in liver to some extent you are actually transferring when you are carrying this this is happening in the blood and this upper part is happening in the rods the rod cells and the retinal pigment epithelium or the retinal epithelium this completes the world's visual cycle. Alright.